Hello. Hello. My name is Andrew. And I'm Antonio. We are so pleased you're able to join us. What is happening today? Well, we are continuing to look at miracles. Miracles? Like it's a miracle I managed to sort out my whole wardrobe last night and tidy my room. No. Hmm. What about your Tiddling Wings team is drawing and there's one minute to go and it's your turn and you ping your wing and it flies to the pot and you win the final point. Surely that is a miracle. Or am I just miraculous at Tiddlywinks? Um, no. And what are Tiddlywinks and where in the Bible do you read about them? It's an old fashioned game where you have to shoot a wink, which is a small plastic disc, into flight by flicking the squidget across the top of a, a wink and then over its edge, thereby propelling it into the air. Right. I didn't know you played Tiddlywinks. It's just an example. Oh, uh, um, none of those things are truly miracles, of course. Miracles are acts of God. They are things we cannot explain. Miracles are things beyond our control or the control of anyone else we know. Anyone, that is, except God. Oh, I see what you mean. Those miracles. Mm -hmm. The Bible is filled with some amazing miracles. In the Old Testament, these miracles came from heaven. But in the first four books of the New Testament, they came from Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God and he did some amazing miracles. So why did Jesus do miracles? Was it so you could laugh at the Pharisees? No, Jesus never did miracles to get one over on others and show that he was better than them in a proud way. He always had a plan and a purpose behind every miracle. We can learn a lot of lessons from the miracles Jesus did, which is why we have called this series, Jesus, he did what? It's time to visit our friend for this series. Is he a superhero? He's no superhero, he's a supervillain. Is this villain trying to take over the world? He most certainly is. He's so bad that the first syllable of his name is bad. Do you know who it is? He, he is, is the, the badger. badger. Let's roll the titles. Badger, you look busy. Anything you want to let me in on? Shh. I'm concentrating. And it's the badger to you. Yes, sorry. And um, what are you concentrating on? If you must know, I am working out how to be two places at the same time. Two places at once? Well, yes, be here, but also be somewhere else at the same time. Right. Can I ask why? Well, just think about the power I could have if I'm in lots of other places all at the same time. Think of all I could achieve. I could take over the world. Right. I don't quite understand how you'd do that. It's very complicated and top secret and I can't explain it to you. Right. Does that mean if you're in lots of places at once and, and say that it's lunchtime, would you, could you eat things like in two different places at the same time? And like, when would you know if you were full? And, and also like, wouldn't that work out like pretty expensive? So buying food in two different places. And I, yeah. 
Sorry to disturb you, sir, but the Wi-Fi seems to be playing up. I'm wondering if we have maybe too many devices linked to it. I see you have. See, I'm, um, I'm trying to be in more than one place at the same time, and I'm using all these devices to help me. Why would you want to be in more than one place at any time? So, so that he can take over the world. Oh, yes, I'd forgotten about that. It's top secret. Right, well, I guess you can be in more places than at one time. Told you, Maud, I have finally cracked it. Even Henry says I can do it. I wouldn't go that far. I mean that you could be with lots of people in their homes on a screen, but not actually with them. Oh. So he, he couldn't have lots of lunches all at the same time? No, because he isn't physically there. He couldn't actually affect anything or do anything apart from where he is physically, which is in this room right here. No one can except Jesus. It does remind me of a miracle that Jesus did. He did a miracle in the place he wasn't in. Allow me to tell you the story. Must you? Yes, please. Jesus went to visit Cana in Galilee again. This is where Jesus had changed the water into wine. One of the king's important officers lived in the city of Capernaum. This man's son was sick. The man heard that Jesus had come from Judea and was now in Galilee. He went to Jesus and begged him to come to Capernaum and heal his son. His son was almost dead. Jesus said to him, You people must see signs and miracles before you will believe in me. The officer said, Sir, come before my child dies. Jesus answered, Go, your son will live. The man believed what Jesus told him and went home. On the way, the man's servants came and met him. They told him, your son is well. The man asked, what time did my son begin to get well? They answered, it was about one o'clock yesterday when the fever left him. The father knew that one o'clock was the exact time that Jesus had said, your son will live. So the man and all the people of his house believed in Jesus. That was the second miracle that Jesus did after coming to Judea, to Galilee. So let me get this straight. The man found Jesus and asked him to heal his son, but his son wasn't with him and, and, and he was at home. Jesus said yes, and then the man went home and on the way he met his servant who said his son was better at the exact same time that Jesus said his son would live. That's right. Wow, and wow. Absolutely. So Jesus wasn't with him, like with the poorly son. No. But, but he still did the miracle. He still changed the situation. He healed the boy, but, but he wasn't in the room at the same time. That is completely right. And it happened at the exact time that Jesus said, your son will live. I think we gathered that. So Jesus healed the boy long distance. Yes. Yeah. Jesus is amazing. He certainly is. And he's still doing miracles today. Anyway, I must get on. Is it possible, sir, if you could maybe close down at least a few of these devices? I'm trying to get a recipe for a very delicious lemon drizzle cake I want to bake this afternoon for tea. But before I do, a cup of tea, sir? Yes, please. Wow, the badger thought he had found a way to take over the world, but he was completely wrong. I know, I wonder what he'll think of next. I can't wait, but let's go back to the Bible reading we had today. There is so much packed in it. Firstly, the dad. 
He was like a really important person. He was one of the king's important officers. He was also not one of Jesus' followers, but he would have heard about Jesus and what he was doing. So he must have been pretty desperate leaving his dying son to come and find Jesus. Interestingly, this man must have left his son early in the morning. The distance between Capernaum and Cana, where Jesus was, was about 18 miles or 28.9682 kilometers, which is the same as running 72 and a half laps of a standard running track or running from London's Big Ben to Wembley Football Stadium and back. Wow, that's far, but doable if walking. In Jesus' time, that was how they got around, walking. So it would have taken him about six hours to get there. But interestingly, he didn't make it home till the next day. So he didn't go home straight away. He waited around till the next morning before heading off. His hope rested in Jesus' word and he took it to heart. He trusted that Jesus would do what he said. That is remarkable faith for someone who had only just met Jesus. Then to find out that the boy was healed at exactly the same time that Jesus said he would must have been incredible. He may have thought those words that Jesus spoke were talking of what was to come, but the fact that as Jesus said those words, it happened, meant those words had power. And it was then that the royal official believed because of the power of Jesus' words. The Bible tells us that the man and all the people of his house believed in Jesus. This story reminds us of the great demonstration of God's deity. The one true God is his ability to create everything by the power of his word. That is who he is. This is what he does. He doesn't speak words just to give information. He speaks and things happen. We just need to look at the very first story in the Bible of creation to see the power of his word. He spoke and it happened. No word is wasted. No word is meaningless. Every word comes with power. This is why we hold the Bible so highly. It's not just a book of words or nice stories, but a book full of God's truth and power that helps us to know Him and follow Him. There have been times in my life where I have felt the Holy Spirit highlight a Bible verse for me to read, or I've been reading my Bible and there's a particular word or phrase I read that I know that the Holy Spirit is saying, this is for you right now. It really helps my faith. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says, so faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. So we need to read his word. Why not spend time this week doing that? God also speaks to us directly or through other people by the power of the Holy Spirit. He speaks and good things happen. We just need to learn to listen to his voice. Can you think of other times in the Bible when Jesus caused something miraculous to happen by simply speaking words? That's it from us. I hope you have had a great week and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.